Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this witchy Victorian shirt. It's been rather rainy and dreary here and I've been feeling extra moody. So I've decided to finally attempt making this 1893 blouse pattern I purchased last summer. I'll link it below. It says it's meant for silk, but I'm a bit too reckless to be wearing silk and I'd like to be able to wear this with a couple walking skirts I've made, so I'm going to use the Cotton Lawn Eye Impulse Ball while watching Costuming Drama's Costuming Buying Guide on Fabric. I purchased some lace trim and lace fabric for the yoke and now I'm ready to open up these instructions and get to town. Oh, wait. There are no instructions. Hmm. So I guess the first thing I should do is cut out the pattern pieces. And luckily, the pieces are labeled with how many I need to cut out of each so I can at least try to put this puzzle together. The pattern said that seam allowances were included, so I cut my pattern pieces as directed. The only change I made was to the belt where I added one inch since the pattern piece was a bit smaller than my waist. I should specify that I plan to wear this as everyday wear, so I won't be wearing a corset for the most part, however if I ever attend a costumed event for the 1890s, I will do the whole undergarments properly. Um, until then, I treat this as more of a history bounding type garment or something that I can wear every day and be my truest witchy self. So yesterday I cut out all of the pattern pieces and it definitely is a lot of pieces, but I'm going to start with the lining, um, mostly because I the lining is more fitted than the actual shirt. The actual shirt is a little more billowy or the like top layer of the shirt, the layer that is seen from like your perspective. So I'm going to sew the lining pieces together at a, I think like a three eighths, maybe a quarter of an inch seam allowance and see how that fits me. And then from there I can sew it together um, like I can make adjustments. My goal for today is to get the lining like fixed, fitted, all of that, and then get the yoke sewn up because I still need to cut the yoke on the uh, lace fabric. And then um, after that, if there's time to put together the outer shirt layer before connecting it to the bodice, bodice, the out, the actual top fabric, um, if I can get that attached to the lining or attached to itself and then maybe also the lining, that'd be nice. The lining layer is fitted, like I said, and therefore it has darts and a few extra pieces than the billowy outer layer. So I'm naturally just going to start with the darts and kind of work my way from there. I'm going to press my darts open over my tailor's hand. Okay, so something I wanted to show you all on this um, pattern is like instead of having notches or like, you know, labeling this, well, instead of having notches, they label like every corner. So this is two, up here is one, uh, and then like this is the side like front lining or, you know, whatever. And this piece has a two, and then a one, and that's like how you know where to line things up. So that can get a little confusing if you don't keep your pieces pinned together. So like I'm leaving everything pinned to its pattern piece. Normally I don't you like get this crazy about it, but I also don't want to be, I don't want to be writing like one, two, three, four on like the, every piece and like that stuff when I, like there could have been a notch 
So anyway, just, just let me point that out about this. Um, I have finished the front lining darts, so I'm moving on. And basically, I'm going to pin all of these in like together until we get to the back. So like this piece to this, and then I have another one here that will go to this. Um, pin them all, pin this to the back piece, do the same on the other half, sew it all, and then sew the back pieces together and press all the seams, and then I will try it on and see what happens. Oh, and also the shoulder seam last. This is where we are at with our lining. Um, luckily, it is the lining and um, like it'll attach to the, I'm gonna attach it to the top up here before I add the color. So like I'll attach the yoke to the bottom part and I've marked where my yoke ends, like kind of-ish. So it's okay that it's short in my opinion. Um, so I think I'm just gonna leave it. I'll show you really quick because I pinned this so I could show you guys kind of where the yoke is, not where the yoke ends, but like this is the pattern piece that kind of will line up around here. And you can see how long it is. Um, also where my belly button is, is where I um, wear my skirts. So like my, my skirt will definitely meet up with this lovely piece of paper. So I'm not too worried. I think if I ever do more versions of this shirt, like if I like this and want a white one, which is highly likely, or an ivory, I'm gonna lengthen it by two inches. Um, and I'm kind of sort of like learning that I do have quite a long torso compared to like what I thought. I always, I don't know. I never paid attention to my torso to be honest, but yeah, so that's where we're at. This, this fits pretty well. Um, I'm happy with it. And, um, I, like I said, I like the movement aside from there being pins here and I'm ready to start the outer piece. Okay, so I realized I didn't film any of this, but basically this is where we're at with the yoke, with the lace, like kind of draping off of it. Um, what I did was I bought 10 yards of this lace from fabric.com. Uh, online, it didn't say whether it was stretchy or not, but all the stretchy ones said they were stretchy. So when I purchased it, I was like, oh, this doesn't say it has any, like it's stretched to it. It didn't say it had any stretch in it, so I was like, awesome. And then I get it, and it's super hella stretchy, so whatever. Um, but I basically cut four yards of it, gathered, like, divided it into four sections, divided the yoke into four sections, and then just gathered each yard down to fit the appropriate section, and uh, stitched it down. So here we are. So now I have the shirt pieces that I need to sew together first. So we have side. This is the back. And this is the front, which it's like backwards because I was trying to fit them in the right places. So I have to sew these together and then... 
and then um, I can gather these down to fit into the yoke pieces and sew that up. So let's do it. The markings on the pattern pieces don't tell you where to line the gathered pieces up, so I basically pinned this piece to the corresponding number markings that I mentioned before, and then when I got to the asterisks for the gathered pieces, I just gathered them down to fit in this the space. It seemed to work fine, so I went with it. This is how I did all of the gathers for the entire project because, again, they don't really tell you where to line things up and like that kind of stuff. It's kind of weird. Okay, so this is the third day that I am working on this project, and um, I have the belt, the collar, and the sleeves to do, and I'm hoping I can get them done in about six to seven hours, and then tomorrow I can, you know, suit up and take some footage and edit all of this, um, but I have to actually get interfacing cut, which I waited to do, I don't know why. Who knows why I do anything. So we're gonna cut the belt foundation on interfacing, and then we're gonna cut the collar, um, like a collar piece on interfacing, and interface that. So, and then I'm going to actually, uh, I have two pieces here. This is gonna be um, the belt bias and the collar bias. Basically what I have to do is gather those down and fit them into the pieces so that it kind of creates a ruffled look. And for the belt, I added an inch to each side because I was um, insecure about how it would come together. So yeah, let's just do that. Uh, for interfacing, I am using a, um, a fabric interfacing. I'm not using like a papery one because I do want to be able to machine wash this since I did machine wash all the fabric. There's no reason for me not to be able to um, machine wash this. So I am using the Dreamweave Fusible. Um, and then what, uh, like I will cut this out and get them fused on. Once my interfacing was fused onto my fabric pieces, I gathered the edge of the bias cut pieces for the collar and belt. Now I am pinning these pieces to the collar piece that is stabilized. I didn't really love this look, so I pressed it with my iron and it gave it a like chaotic pleat look that I ended up really liking, so for both the belt and the collar, I stuck with that look. I attached the collar to the yoke, and now I am folding over the side edge so I can hand stitch it down. I opted out of aesthetic hand sewing shots for this video because the black thread on black fabric was just a bit difficult to see. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is my lining piece for one of the sleeves, and right here there is a gathered piece, so on this pattern there's two asterisks here, and there's asterisks up here too at the top. And I'm assuming because on the other pieces the asterisks meant to gather, that I did the same here. So I basically put in my gather stitch in this, this space, and then I pinned the lining piece together, and then gathered that into that, 
that space and then there's a slit here. I put this on my arm and it's a little big, but I think it's fine because like this is either gonna overlap or something, but I also don't want it so tight that I have issues moving. So we're gonna, we're gonna put the second piece of lining together just like this, but opposite. Okay, so for the outer um, sleeve, basically what I have here is the same thing I did on the inner sleeve, but I haven't sewn in the like this seam together yet where there, there's the slit. So uh, here is the gather. This is the top of the sleeve. Oh my God, there we go. And basically what I'm gonna do is I have my big old poofy part this is my pattern piece for that. This bottom edge here, I'm gonna roll under, um, not roll, I'm just gonna fold it under. And then I'm gonna gather the bottom edge and this line here. Um, I'll, I'll sew some like, like gather stitches for both sleeve halves. And then I will basically pin it to the sleeve base, stitch it down again, like with its gathered piece, and then I can stitch the sleeve up. That's my plan, so let's see if it works. Okie dokie, so I'm getting close to being done. Um, I basically just sewed with the right sides together the like lining sleeve and the actual sleeve that matched it. And to match it, I made sure to see where this little gathered elbow piece is on each one. Then I, um, on this one, I've already um, basically put the sleeve in, pinned it, I need to gather this top portion down up here. It's gonna get gathered like even more than you obviously see. And that'll fit into this space. And then I can sew it in. And then um, because it's fully lined, I will just do this on each side and then hand stitch the lining into the sleeve here. I'll try to get footage of it. It's very hard to see because it's black on black on black. I never think about these things when I'm doing them, but that's okay. And then if there's time, cause I was really hoping to be done by six and it's 5.15 and I don't think I'll be done by six. Um, if there's time, I am going to add uh, like either a snap at the neck or a snap at the neck and then a snap like behind the yoke or something. And then maybe some, a button like to close this at the bottom here so that it'll overlap and become small enough for my wrist. Um, and then that will be it. So hopefully I can get this done in the next 45 minutes or so, but if not, we'll see. Overall, I really love how this shirt turned out. It was a little short in my opinion and the sleeves could have been slightly more fitted and ultimately there's like several adjustments that I could make to it. I almost want it to close in the back instead of the front or just overlap a little bit in the front but I still love how it looks. I feel like, I don't know, so like witchy, whimsical. I don't know, I just, I love how it, it makes me feel when I wear it, and I want to make another one already. 
Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you like my content, subscribe. You can head on over to Patreon if you would like to s support my channel further, and let me know what you're working on in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Happy sewing!